Two metres apart isn't wide enough for us. Two streets, two cities. We aren't friends, are we? We walk past each other in the street and you cross the road. Good, I think. Thank God we can hide behind this. I know your jacket. How fake the leather sounds. I know your fringe like it was my own. I know you get the ten past eight bus on Tuesdays because I make sure I get the later one. I know you smoke. You drink red wine because sometimes I see it on your teeth. I'm not a creep. But somehow I study you. You hesitate in the street slightly and I think perhaps you were going to say something after all. You stop. I stop, you blow at your fringe. But it wasn't me that had your attention, but the old man behind me. You wave at him in his garden, then walk on. Sometimes I spit after I see you. Sometimes I have to go inside and wash my mouth. Sometimes I look in the mirror. I never cry. The children tell me you go to your allotment every day. You are good with plants. You put things in pots and they grow. Then you put them on the table. You eat peas, I say. Raw. They taste okay when they come from the ground, my eldest tells me. Hooray, I say. I look at my shop-bought vegetables in a pan of salty water. Hooray, I think. I go past the allotment later. I'm going that way anyway. And I wonder which one is yours. Is it the one with the beans and courgettes already up, perhaps? Or the one with the set of chairs and the rainbow flag? Yes, that would be right. Or maybe it's the messiest one of all that somehow says, this is a place you can be. I imagine you and all the kids, dirty hands and faces, looking at things as you pull them up. I imagine you kneeling down to show the youngest a little worm you have found in the earth. I come home and I buy some cut flowers from Tesco's, even though I have to queue, which I put in a jug. After the clapping, I go for a walk around the block. I'm alone and I want to walk. I go your way. I don't know why. I could say I have to drop something off to the kids, but I don't. I go your way because that is the way my feet take me. My feet take me places and I go. That is the only rule I have these days. You are out on the street, smoking. I know you have given up smoking, but this being too long in the house is killing us all. I know. I'm drinking. I'm ready to cross the road and go the other way. But there is something new about the way you are standing. You are holding on to the railing like it was the only thing keeping you up. I look at you for a second. And you wipe your eyes on your sleeve and you sniff and then you turn away. But I remember that look. I remember that way of holding on. That way of feeling like the whole world would slide if you let go. Chrissy, I say. But you've gone. I don't see you next time I drop the kids off. You're usually in the background or making the tea, moving around, being. I don't see you at the bus stop. Is Chrissy ill? I ask the kids. No, they say, but she's hurt her hand. How did she hurt her hand? She dropped something on it. And I remember the way I told my mother I had shut my foot in the car door by accident. The way I told my boss I had been sick. I find you at the allotment. Chrissy, I say as I stand by the gate, but you are out of earshot and busy putting canes in the ground. And I remember once being shut in a room all night while you raged outside the door. Chrissy, sleeping in the hotel bathroom because I was too scared to come out. Chrissy, then you see me. You come over. Why are you always 
watching me, you ask, takes me aback. Because you are beautiful, I say. Because if I was him, I would have chosen you too, you scoff. You are cleverer. I got away. If that is clever, then you laugh at that. A laugh that is like the morning sun. Then you stop suddenly. The laugh is hurting you. You put a hand to your side. And I know it wasn't that funny. No joke is that funny. And when you raise your head and look at me, there is something else. For who else in all the world knows like we know? He has a temper. Of course he does. He doesn't mean it. And afterwards he is sorry. You don't need to tell me, Chrissy. I know the sorry. It's just the lockdown, that's all. He is stressed as all hell. He might lose his job. And I nod. You blow at your fringe. And you hesitate. But there is no more to be said. Then you go back to your beans. And I go back to my house. I walk the long way home. Next time I see you in the street, you don't cross the road. You don't wave at the man behind me. You hesitate, then you stop. You stand and turn. And when I catch up with you, we walk. Two metres between us, in silence for a while.